Welcome back, folks. This is part two of Horny Goat Weed, Epimedium Grandiflorum. And I, the video cut off of Dropoli in the last part of this episode. And so I'm going to bring you part two of Horny Goat Weed. It's so fun to be able to say that and have it be connected to a plant. Um, if you are interested in learning about what sexuality looks like in your astrology birth chart, you can feel welcome to email me, stephanie at sacredearthessentials.com, and we can schedule a time for me to do an astrology chart reading for you. <clears throat> and if you are interested in learning more about plant medicine or having a personal herbal consultation with me, you can contact me at that same email address. And if you are interested in collaborating with me in any way with my cannabis adventures at Global Grangier, you can reach me there for cannabis specific things at globalgrangier.com. All right, I need some water, all this talking. So back to goat, greatest of all time. So a lot of us have looked up to different people in our lives, whether they be family members, colleagues, um, someone that we know who does an excellent job at a place that we go um, to buy things, our children, and even celebrities. And one of the reasons that I moved to Vermont um, almost 14, it'll be 14 years this February that I've been in Vermont was because there were a lot of things that I observed in what I would call mainstream culture that didn't really seem healthy and seemed like people were being manipulated and that the values of our American culture and society were, um, you know, our spiritual bread was sliced thin. There was just some stuff lacking and I really wanted healthy water and to learn about plant medicine and be in nature and learn about community and how to be a part of a community. And so I moved to Vermont for those things on a prayer um, because I felt like if I stayed in the city any longer in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, that I was going to die. Um, if not physically, <clears throat> at least on a soulful internal level. So I you know, made the leap and took the adventure to Vermont, right? And as I've been living here, I have not had cable. I think I'm, I may have had cable for like less than a year, 10 years ago. I do have the internet and I do probably spend too much time on social media, particularly YouTube. But I haven't had a TV and I don't pay attention to the paparazzi things. I love music and there are definitely some movies that I love as well. But I just figured that that wasn't, that I didn't know how to, that I didn't have a place in that <clears throat> community, right? In that, in that lifestyle with all of those goats. And since then, you know, I've said this before in many of my videos, that I have the blessing, the luck, the honor of meeting the most amazing people in my life on all levels you know I have best friends who of all different paths of life <clears throat> and I try to be kind and loving to all while also you know having to learn you know like the goats have horns right so the horns can be used to protect oneself as well So the point being is that horny goat weed can teach us a lot of different lessons <clears throat> about sexuality and about how to get in touch with our energy, our kundalini, our power, and how to allow ourselves to unleash our power in ways that improve our lives and the lives of those around us. And so instead of looking at power as a negative or an evil thing, <clears throat> reframing it and having a perspective of power as a positive creative force of nature. <clears throat> and that's one thing that I see in common with all these, all these goats 
in all the different industries and um, walks of life, paths of life, is that they allow for that life force to flow through them. And they are able <clears throat> to align with their authentic self in a way that allows for good things to happen and allows for a positive connection and love and success in their lives. And so sexual healing can also reverberate into other areas of our lives. So when we heal those parts of ourselves, whether it just be from shyness or trauma or whatever reasons that someone may have, learning how to cultivate a healthy relationship with the sexual and sensual parts of ourselves without repressing it and without taking it over the top and really just finding out what is the best and healthiest for you and that is safe, you know, that where that as long as ye harm not, um, unless it's consensual. Um, so the reason that I'm bringing up this conversation about goats and sexuality and celebrities and epimedium leaf is because <clears throat> I didn't even remember that the Grammys were music awards and I missed it the other night and I've been watching clips from the Grammys and I'm incredibly impressed and appreciative and touched by the performances and many of those people. <clears throat> and a lot of those people, I've never met any of them in person, I don't think, but have looked up to a lot of them throughout my entire life. And I often say that music has saved my soul and that music, you know, it always saves my soul. And these people, against all odds, right, worked their, their asses off, right, to get to where they are at, and that they allowed for their passion and their heart to fuel them and to drive them, and they followed that. And when we take plants, like Epimedium Leaf, it, it gets our goat, like epimedium leaf, horny goat weed gets our goat, it gets us going so that our fire gets stoked and we can pursue our passions and allow that life force to flow through us in a positive and powerful way. And so two years ago, I started paying more attention to the celebrity world because it was interesting to me and I thought like these people are doing all these amazing things and but they're you know and they're in the spotlight and in the limelight and I bet that can be incredibly difficult and challenging at times and as someone who really loves doing healing work and someone who really loves people and compassion and astrology charts it's really interesting to be able to apply astrology to what we see in the world around us and understand people better. So I was telling my, you know, telling myself like we're all equal in value on an intrinsic level as beings on this on this planet and everyone goes through challenging times and everyone feels sadness and pain and grief and happiness and heartbreak and love and you know all these different ranges of emotions that we have and that all of these people worked hard to get to where they're at and a lot of them came from very little and I think about for example Oprah's story of her beginnings, Ian Van Sant, um, I'm thinking about a lot of a lot of different people. Steve Harvey talks about how he was homeless at one point before becoming famous. And I know comedians have said a lot about, you know, how many jokes they've told that haven't been funny to get to where they are. Um, and, you know, people blowing up rockets, like so much failure along the way. And learning that you have to I mean, you don't have to, but if you want to move forward and become successful, and there's that poem about success by, I believe, Ralph Waldo, um, Waldo Emerson, correct? That 
talks about what success is, you know, and that it's more than just acquiring wealth. However, wealth, money, my own natural energy yield, one can also apply it in that sense and one can use their wealth and their abundance as a reflection of their creativity and continue to utilize and apply that energy and that creativity and those funds you know, in positive ways um, f for their own benefit and the benefit of all beings if they so choose to do that. And so the more that I pay attention and to these people, the more I love them and the more I appreciate how they share themselves so nakedly with the world. And one could say that it's just entertainment, <clears throat> but it's healing and it's a sacred art. And in psychotherapy, there is a psychodrama that is used for therapeutic purposes. And I am beginning to really appreciate and love that and see the value in those types of creative therapies, especially when plain old, you know, stereotypical lay on the couch psychotherapy isn't working. We have to apply new methods and we have to get creative with how we heal. Um, and that reminds me of a book called Delivering What Works in Therapy. And the book is about, it's not the same size fits all. And that as a counselor or a healer, you must approach it in that individualized way. And so delivering <laughs> whatever works in therapy. And speaking of goats, I wanted to honor Bob Marley for his contribution to the world and to love and to one love and how much his music heals to this day and that through Bob there have been countless other musicians and artists including his children and other family members and friends who have contributed to the reggae scene community and that that loving that loving vibration and so I wanted to shout out to him. And so these people, <laughs> shout out Bob. And so these people, I can't remember his name in the Orthodox religion that his name was changed to right before his, um, his passing. So I apologize for that. Um, but he, he was a goat. He was the greatest of all times. And I think about other goats but he is one that I wanted to mention today. Again, it's um, Black History Month, Martin Luther King Jr., another goat, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and all of the musicians and the people that have paved the way for the rest of us. I give thanks to all of you goats. <laughs> and just really loving that word. And it's interesting because the goat also in, um, represents Pan or the devil. And thinking about the performance at the Grammys with the devil and how often we can be afraid of those darker or shadow sides of life and we can look at this in several different lenses. We can look at it through a strictly religious lens or we could look at it again in that psychodrama using drama and theater as a tool for healing and empowerment and we can look at how when we demonize sexuality and repress it in unhealthy ways, we're our own, we're our own demon, we're our own devil, that that is equally, um, that's even worse, you know, than having healthy sexuality and that our culture has some room for healing on that topic. And that's one of those topics that some people love to talk about. And for some people talking about sex is more of a challenge. Um, for me, I love talking about it. And for better or worse, I think that that is a positive thing. You know, there's plenty of herbal books out there about using herbs for sexual healing. And another goat that I wanted to mention is Jesus. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm like actually 
not joking in the sense that I really love Jesus. And I'm about to get weird here on you, but I went to Goddard, got weird. And if you've been watching me or have interacted with me at all in my life, you're going to know that I, I do have that bit of a um, rebellious, eccentric side. And that may be in part because my Uranus is in my first house, my Uranus, which is part of my um, independent and sometimes perceived rebellious nature, right? And so some of our other sacred rebels, Jesus is another one. And I mentioned Jesus, if, even though it's um, Black History Month, because my understanding, and again, I wasn't there, so I don't know, but my understanding is that Jesus had darker skin and that would he would be considered um, black as far as the color of his skin went. And again, I, I could be wrong, but he definitely wasn't as white as the guy in The Chosen. I'm so sorry, guys. If someone's going to kill me for saying that. Please don't kill me. But it's the truth. And I love the story and I love the healing of Jesus. I wanted to go grab my Bible. And I didn't grow up that way. And it's something that came to me or that I came to later in life. But his presence is real and he's real. And I mean, I believe the story is real and I love professing his name and that presence. And I also feel that it's a very, he's very misunderstood and that Jesus's work and the work and has been manipulated and, and used against people. And that relates to this conversation about this monologue about the Grammys. It's funny because in some ways you could also say Jesus was an illuminator and he was also in some sense of the word a fallen angel um, in as God's only um, son, you know, crucified, dead and buried, rose on the third day. And so I just, again, when we think about theater, I think about the image of the, of the masks, one crying and one happy. And when we think about God and that there is, you know, one God, one great creator, one great spirit, but yet these horrible things happen in the world. And maybe that's, you know, because God does have those two sides and that God is allowing us these opportunities or goddess you know a great spirit <clears throat> the great mystery is allowing us these opportunities to learn and to grow and to evolve both in the like, what we would consider the physical realm as well as in the you know the is in consciousness and so i had to give credit to jesus because i really think that jesus um was a loving sacred rebel and that his true message and teachings and where they came from are important and valuable and essential and sacred to this world. And, you know, his message to me was one of just like Bob Marley's message, right? And that is threatening <laughs> because if we're all loving each other, it's a lot harder to manipulate and to pit people against one another. So if you can and it doesn't interact with any of your medications or health issues, give horny goat weed, epimedium leaf a try and allow for it to infuse you to be the greatest of all time in your regard, right? And, you know, even Jesus would probably laugh at that performance and appreciate the satire in it. And so I wanted to read this to you before I read you a little bit more about horny goat weed. I'm just full of um, seemingly contradictory information. But in, for me, it's not fall in love with Jesus all over again. My All for Him by Basilea Schlink. Speaking of goats and greatest of all time, I did not get to see or go to the Grammys unfortunately, but I did get to see a Grammy play her guitar live at church on Sunday. Her name is Lucille Ball and she's a goat and it's hilarious because at dinner on Saturday, they had a dinner for their Guatemala trip. Her and I, I can't drive at night. I mean, I, I do if it's short, 
but I get a horrible migraine where it feels like my eyeballs are exploding out of my head and then my vision is messed up um, for most of the whole entire next day. And it also feels dangerous because I can't always see, especially when the cars are coming at me. So I'm trying to find some solutions for that. So I didn't go anywhere Saturday night after the church dinner, but Lucille and I had a conversation about goats and I got to tell her what goat stands for. And she was so gleeful and pleased and appreciative for the conversation because it opened up a door into childhood memories for her about drinking goat milk and about some other issues related to that conversation. And so you never know where you get to bless and be a blessing. And as long as you just go with the flow with an, with an open heart and you know spreading love like a virus. Uh, thank you to PJ for that phrase, that hashtag. You know, spread love, spread love like a, a healing balm, you know, just spread love as best you can, as long as it's authentic and coming from a place of joy. <sighs> All right. So one of the things that they talk about in this book is loving for a woman, like loving Jesus with this bridal love, right? And Lucille Ball, as she was up there, or I don't think that was her last name, but anyways, Lucille was up there playing the song that she wrote about loving Jesus more and more. Every day she loves Jesus just a little bit more, just a little bit more. And it was just beautiful to see her up there singing that. And so that was the Grammy that I got to see. And that was the Grammy that I got to spend time with and help that the day before. So that was a blessing. And so looking at all of the different people in the world in their own goat righteousness. I'm coining that if no one else has it yet. Goat righteousness. So when I think of Jesus, another way that I would like to explain Jesus to people is you can replace the word Jesus with life. You can replace the word Jesus with love. You can replace the, replace the word Jesus with community. If you if saying it about Jesus doesn't fit for you and make sense, which I totally understand and get for lots of different reasons, both present day and historically. But when we think about some of the things that people have written about it, and focus on those in our hard times and our low times, it really does make a big difference, or at least for me it has. So I've been saved by music and by Jesus, which is the community. <clears throat> Whatever your task, work heartily as serving the Lord and not men. That's Colossians 3.23, which in some ways contradicts what I just said. But in my opinion, I think that you could also interpret that sentence as working heartily to serve what is right, what is good, and to not serve things that are low vibe, that are manipulative, that, that are not adding in a positive way to humanity or the culture. We nourish bridal love not only by loving, pronouncing the name of Jesus, but also lovingly pronouncing the name of Jesus, but also by doing everything out of love for him. This lightens the burden even during difficult, demanding work. No longer dependent on what appeals to us by nature, we find that unpleasant tasks become a source of joy. With Jesus, the bitter becomes sweet, if the bitter has not yet become sweet for us, we have not yet entered the fellowship of love with Jesus. So I really loved that and wanted to give a shout out to Jesus as the greatest of all time because he's been gone for how many years and he in the physical and is still blessing us with his sacred love. Like a lot of us will pray to ancestors or ones who have passed on and I think that there's a lot of different contexts and benefits that we can get from just honoring Jesus, just like we would honor the Buddha, for example. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to say to that is if you replace that word Jesus, um, 
with love, with love the bitter becomes sweet. If the bitter has not yet become sweet for us, we have not yet entered the fellowship of love. Because if, if love is patient and love is kind and love is keeping no record of wrongdoings and love is forgiving and love is not contingent upon getting anything back, you just love because you love, then you have learned a deeper level of be, being in fellowship with love, of being love, of being within that circle of love, both individually and collectively. And that when we pronounce love, when we pronounce that we are living our lives out of love for life, for each other, for Jesus, if that works for you, for Selassie, for Allah, for Great Spirit, you know, when you have a connection to that and psychological studies have shown that people who have some type of spiritual belief practice uh, typically have a higher level of self-efficacy when healing from things. And speaking on that, I also wanted to say in honor of <laughs> greatest of all time, I had been having these excruciating heart pains for over a year now since I got the second COVID vaccine and nothing I did was helping it go away. It felt almost like there was like black arrow metal or something lodged in my heart. And I thought I was gonna die. I thought I was gonna die. It hurt when I was laying down. No matter what I did, it was hurting. And I went to the doctor and, you know, complained about it and all these things and no solutions and no solutions. I finally wrote it on a tag at the local church prayer board, put it up on the prayer board. One week, two weeks later, gone. Like, I've had a few tiny chest pains come back, but not the 24-7 feeling like I'm getting stabbed in the heart chest pain. Um, so I am blessed and thank you for that. And that's a little bit of my testimony to the power of prayer. And when we think about Jesus in that way, we can think about him as an example, as a goat of how to give of oneself, of how to sacrifice of oneself for the greater good. And I think that a lot of people do that and that probably a lot of people even in the limelight do that that we don't know about because they do say to give in secret um at times you know so and and that is I don't know how I'm relating <laughs> Jesus and a conversation about horny goat weed um but in some ways I think it goes together because both the plant and Jesus are saying you know to love and be loved in healthy ways and that those that those I don't think that anywhere I mean Jesus loved Mary who was considered to be a prostitute and so clearly he had a relationship an understanding a knowledge maybe even an ancient knowledge of sex or tantra that superseded the beliefs when he went back to that area and, and that it can be dangerous to some people who are controlling knowledge to manipulate a situation when someone speaks the truth. And many of us know, historically, even Bob Marley, Jesus, Martin Luther King, all these goats um, being slaughtered. And so that could be a whole nother conversation for another day. And, and I think that it's important to honor these people and honor their contributions to our current lives and and then to do right by them just like we would want to do right by a beloved parent um, or our children <clears throat> and so I think I saw this coffee sign at the local coffee shop the other day and been trying to get out more my recovery from the isolation of COVID and other things has definitely been stuck in sloth mode. And so I'm going to goat mode, folks. I'm going into goat mode. I warned you. Just kidding. It's a promise. Going into goat mode. Um, and hopefully I'm not leading myself to slaughter. But what I know is that I, I feel more joy sharing of myself, sharing of the bread of life, sharing love with people 
um, bringing love and joy and healing and peace wherever I go. And within that process, just like when you learn to give Reiki, you, if you're properly channeling the Reiki energies, are benefiting from giving that healing as well, which is one of the beautiful things. And again, another testimony to how what you give comes back to you. And that when you give love, you get love. And so I'm going to try out this horny goat weed. You can check it out and buy some with the 15% discount through my Mountain Rose um, affiliate link. And as soon as I'm getting my commercial kitchen set up soon, I will be able to bring you some more um, refined products and provide some samples for any of you who are interested in trying this. And I, I believe also, like I made that reference to sloth mode, like depression, years and years of like severe chronic depression, PTSD, you know, stressors in life, all these horrible things, health problems, the chest pain that I was having, um, and feeling stuck in depression. And so there are definitely a lot of plants that are known to help with depressive symptoms and including St. John's wort for example which is another video and for me I believe especially if there is sexual trauma that spending a little time maybe doing a month protocol just on healing um, or giving love and nourishment to that particular area can have a huge benefit not only on that area but on the functioning of all of your system and so When you do that, when you heal that creativity chakra, you're more <laughs> likely to embody the goat qualities. You're, and it's going to help you get out of that sloth energy, out of that depressive energy. And it's gonna get your goat and it's gonna get you going. And sometimes we need people, those sacred rabble rousers and jokers of sorts to get our goat so that we can go after our dreams no matter how juicy they may seem. So really blessed and really thankful for all of you and for things like epimedium leaf, horny goat weed, and for being able to get that life energy back and to activate goat mode and, and just, you know, be thankful and share this wisdom and share this love with all of you in hopes that, you know, it brings you some of those goat vibes and you look at me and look at you look at me watch and how's it go so i'm gonna read a little bit more great song to go with horny goat weed you know and when people get to enjoy a healthy sexuality they're happier and happier people make more impact usually with healing i mean i'm sure there's some people out there who are totally quiet and don't show any emotion at all that are some of the goatiest of healers in the world but i know that for me one way that i like to help people is to help them feel better and to be a positive presence in their life and to be like you know to strive to be the greatest of all time in love which one can't achieve that perfection but one can strive for that which is part of the devotions to mary is striving to be like Mary, knowing that you can never be as perfect as Mary, but that you can strive to embody those qualities and to emanate them out into the world through all that you do, all that you are, all that you be, all that you touch in the Gangier herbal healing fun army, right? The army of love, because I'm a soldier of love. Sorry, I'm not Sade, so, but music heals. I'm gonna read a little bit more to you about horny goat weed, and then I'm gonna let you go. If you haven't clicked off already, thank you. All right, epimedium. So we got the several different varieties of epimedium, and some of this I already said in my first video, but I want to go over the medicinal aspects with you and not just the soulful aspects of horny goat weed. 
And again, this is how babies are made and none of us would be here if it weren't for making love um, or sexual intercourse of some regard or at least the sperm and the egg. And it's all part of life. And, you know, even dolphins make love for fun. Which is how, by the way, horny goat weed got its name from the goat herders in China because they observed that when the goats ate the flowers and ate this plant that they were, their libido increased and they made more goat babies, right? All right, so it's in the Burbidiaceae family, the Barberry family, and its name, Epimedium, derives from the Greek word epa upon media in reference to the ancient country of Medea, southwest of the Caspian Sea. The Mandarin name, Yin Yang Huao, translates as licentious goatwort, aka horny goatweed, in reference to the fact that the goats that graze upon this herb have increased seminal emissions and are more sexually active. Lovely. The, the juice of life. All right. This video is not for kids, by the way, and I definitely am going to make sure to put the age restriction on it um, as it posts. So it has other properties, not just aphrodisiac. It's antiviral. It increases circulatory um, stimulation, which I had mentioned before. It's an endocrine tonic, so it also can function as an adaptogen by helping to regulate the hormones and hypotensive and again an immune stimulant as I was saying with the adaptogen that can be a part of helping the body to heal and it is a yang tonic for the kidney system which in some beliefs is where the there's life force in the kidneys so if you're feeling stagnant and depressed uh, energetically treating the kid kidneys again speaking to your um, healthcare professional might be a, a one of the places to start it can help as a nervous system tonic, restorative tonic, and is a vasodilator. So again, cautions if you have heart complications and check with your medications or your partner's medications to make sure there's not a contraindication, <clears throat> meaning something bad could happen, right? And I would also caution for people who may have very severe anxiety, and as always, with all plants and with all medications, start with the lowest dose possible and allow your body to really feel it before taking more. And so um, Bridget Mars says, Epimedium stimulates the sensory nerves, thereby increasing sexual desire and strength. It stimulates the pituitary gland and thus gonads and increases sperm production and motility as well as testosterone production and in men. And in women, it actually does the opposite and helps to increase the estrogen production, which is why it's a beautiful, balanced herb. And again, the genius of the plant is, hey, I want everybody to feel good and have a good time. What's wrong? Why is your fire not stoking? You lost your passion for life? Huh, what's, you know, getting your goat. It really does get your goat. And, but in that fun, playful way, like I don't know if any of you have family members or people you know from your community or work, who you meet them, and again, is an astrological thing, and there's just that immediate spark and you're, you're joking around and teasing and giving each other a hard time. But in this really loving, brotherly way, and I, for me, horny goat, <laughs> horny goat weed is like that. It's like it, with that little bit of flirting, right? It flirts you. It flirts with you to get your fire going, and to, you know to to spark that flame. Like when you're down to just a couple hot coals left, and you know, horny goat weed is that kindling that helps it to get going into a roaring fire. Speaking of which, I need to put wood on my fire, literally in the wood stove because it's cold. It stimulates the pituitary gland. I had said that part already. And uh, yep, helps with the adrenal system, dilates the capillaries, improves circulation, and is a traditional remedy in the herbal communities for erectile dysfunction. Um, epimedium warms the kidneys, tonifies yang, and removes excess moisture from the body. 
It also strengthens bones, improves metabolism, and exhibits a mild adrenic effect. Epimedium is used to treat depression, drug and chemical withdrawal symptoms, erectile dysfunction, exhaustion, forgetfulness, I really need to take some horny goat weed, herpes, infertility, low libido, lumbago, memory loss, menopause, numbness, osteoporosis, pain, polyuria, poor circulation, premature ejaculation, and prostate, prostatitis, prostitis. I hope I said that right. It contains vitamin E, manganese, flavonoids, the quercetin, luteolin, camphorol, linoleic acid, and palmitic acid, polysaccharides, it's alkaloid, steroids, and tannin, pungent and sweet. The planet associated with it is Jupiter, the element is fire, it's dry and warm, and it's not recommended for those who already have an excessive sex drive. Sorry guys, <laughs> just kidding. And ladies, and everything in between and beyond. Um, but yeah, if you have an excessive sex drive, I wouldn't re recommend taking this. Um, it, it will it will make you experience wet dreams, which by the way, follow me on Global Grangier because I have the honor and the blessing of getting to grow this new cultivar. It's not quite officially um, licensed yet. It is a special one by none other than the GOAT, Kevin Jodry. woo! And this is what happens when I'm around plants. And it's called Wet Dream. So if I were going to be blending some plants, I think that horny goat weed would go excellent with Wet Dream. And Wet Dream is called Wet Dream because it elicits your mouth to salivate. And so I'm curious and excited to know if it has that same effect anywhere else in the body. And it would go great with the, the horny goat weed, I think. So if you want to learn more about that particular cultivar, then you can go ahead to Global Gangier at 4220 in the video. How funny is that? I don't do it on purpose, folks. You know what we need? A bong rip so massive it restores justice to the kingdom. I know. I am taking forever. And so we have to give credit to the goats, to all those who have gone before, because we wouldn't be where we are today without their wisdom and their hard work and the things that they struggled through and healed from to help then encourage us and to be lights and to be beacons of love and wisdom and fun and creative healing and helping us to come out of our shells and be our authentic selves, even when we feel like freaks of nature. And we have things like horny goat weed to help encourage the natural freak within, that sacred freak. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and end this video, part two of Epimedium Horny Goat Weed Grandiflorum um, with you. And I hope that this video was entertaining and educational. And don't forget to check in with your trusted healthcare provider before embarking on your herbal journey. And as always, the earth is sacred and you are too. Now go be a horny goat.